Hello and welcome to my booktube channel, Jack in the Bookstack, where I talk about a wide variety of book genres and the bookish lifestyle. Today, across many different genres, we're going to talk about one theme in particular, and that is revenge. Why is revenge so satisfying? Whether it's in books or movies and TV shows, this is one of my favorite elements in my entertainment and I have a theory as to why. I feel like as we grow older, as we become adults, we kind of just get used to getting screwed over and feeling powerless. And it sucks giving into the man. I get it, I'm right there with you. My homeowner's insurance doubled my price, HOAs are awful, Corporate situations can be a headache when you're so powerless to make change, you have to do what you're told. I get it. So I feel like when we can get a little bit of revenge in our in our lives, albeit with very different plots than our own real lives, it's very, very satisfying. I have 10 book recommendations for you that feature revenge that I found incredibly satisfying for one reason or another. But before we dive in, I wanna hear from you. What books can you think of that feature revenge that you felt were very satisfying? Please drop it in the comments down below so we can share some recommendations. And if you don't know a book to recommend for me, what do you think makes a revenge story extra good, extra satisfying? What is it? Because I'm going to tell you some elements that I look for. The first characteristic that sets up a great revenge story for me is that I need to feel deep down in my bones, how our character was wronged. I need to set the stage for the revenge. And now this usually means I'm going to get my heart ripped out. And that sucks. I'm, I'm no going into this, that's going to happen. But it's okay, because I know I have faith that I'm going to feel satisfied afterwards. I'm going to go through this pain, but come out on the other side feeling extra good. But I need to feel for the character and their motivation for the revenge. I don't want like a flashback that just talks about it really quickly. I need to dissect it. I need to feel it. And that's what sets me up for a great revenge tale. The next thing that I love to see is an element of intelligence. Sure, violence can be fun and gruesome, but I want some strategy. I want some intelligence. I want my victims to suffer before they're unalived. And this is where that intelligence factor comes in because sure, you can just go on a rampage and take out all the people that wronged you, but I find the, the strategy of it so fascinating. And that's what really makes a fantastic revenge tale for me. The last thing that I like to consider in a revenge story is the element of the consciousness. Does our character feel guilty as they are executing their revenge? Do they second guess it? Do they pull back from it? Do innocents get caught up in their revenge? These are things that I love to look at and I don't have a preference one way or another if they have a conscious. I just think it's interesting to, to look at that thought process. Now that you have dropped your book recommendations for revenge down below and we've talked about what we feel is extra satisfying in a revenge story, let's get started with the recommendations. Now I'm kicking this off with the one that started it all, that defines the perfect revenge story for me, has all the elements that I love. That book is the classic Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Now this is a beefy one, it is a commitment. And at times it can drag a little bit because this was written over the course of like two years in like a newspaper article type format. So disclaimer aside, this is about our main character, Edmond Dantes, and he is living his best life. I think he's in his like 20s. His career is taking off. He's getting promoted. More money is on the horizon. He has the love of his life and she's beautiful. They have the love that storybooks are, are written around. He has this perfect life, but it also triggers some jealousy among his closest friends. They frame him and he gets convicted and sent to prison. And it's kind of like an Alcatraz situation. It, this prison is set on a remote island. He is very, very isolated and he's miserable and he is imprisoned and he has no idea why he's there. He's like, this crime I was convicted of, it wasn't me, I don't know why I'm here. He, Poor guy, he's so innocent and naive. Well, he meets someone in this prison and this someone teaches him a lot of very useful skills, gives him some very valuable information and includes him in his plans to escape the prison. 
So you have a prison break that is so eventful and delectable in itself. Like that story alone is great. Uh, but when he gets out, he goes and hunts for this long lost buried treasure. He gets it, becomes rich, and he reinvents himself as the Count of Monte Cristo, this super, super rich man. man. Now, he decides to go after all the men that falsely accused him and set him up because he he comes to find out like what really happened. Now, the revenge is so brilliant. It, it That is the length of this book, okay, is him uh, disguising himself. And like a lot of times I was reading this and I was like, what does this have to do with anything? But it was the, the Count of Monte Cristo in disguise as another character and I just didn't realize it. And so he's setting up these very elaborate situations to take down these men. He is making them suffer. Psychologically, they are suffering. Physically, they are suffering. Their loved ones are suffering. It is so intricate, well thought out, brilliant. It has that intelligence that, I, that I'm looking for, that I prize in my revenge. And you definitely feel for Edmond Dantes as he's, you know, going through the initial crime that makes him seek revenge because he's so sad and naive. Brilliant. This has all the elements. And then as far as the conscience, um, this does have an element of, you know, the, as the Count of Monte Cristo, he's like, am I playing God? Is this my role? Am I doing too much? And so you do explore that a little bit. So it adds a little bit of uh, philosophical depth to the book as well. So this really, this is the bar. This is the standard for which all other revenge will be measured against. Next up is The Harpy. This is a literary fiction, and I recommend this revenge story for fans of literary fiction with gorgeous writing and some magical realism, because the focus is really on the writing and the emotions rather than a revenge plot. But the plot that is there, this is about a woman who finds out that her husband has been having an affair and she wants revenge. So they decide together that she can complete three actions to get revenge on him. And he doesn't know when, where, or how this revenge will be conducted. And that's the brilliance of this. That's the strategy of this is really the anticipation. So it's like, is it going to be physical pain or is it going to be emotional pain? He has no idea. And he is going crazy wondering what she's going to do. And when she has this power to make this decision, she goes off the deep end. She starts like researching all these like mass attacks and situations and she just falls in this like deep dark conspiracy theory hole of all the stuff that's gone on and like all the potential that she can do against her husband. It is so delectable but again it is not plot forward. We're focusing on her emotions and it's this beauty of this writing and this element of the magical realism I like magical realism, but for me, because I'm so into revenge, I wanted more like literal plot situation rather than the magical realism. So the book overall disappointed me in that regard. But I think, again, if you're that type of reader, if you're looking for that, this could really work for you. And the concept is so brilliant. Very, very unique revenge that it had to make the list. Next up is the contemporary satire murder your employer. This would be great for readers who are looking for a little bit of lighthearted humor. I know, kind of weird to talk about humor with revenge, but it, it really works here. <laughs> so this is about a man who has a horrible boss, ethically horrible boss. And so he decides he and the world will be better without this boss man in it. So he wants to unalive his boss and he tries and he fails. And instead of being caught and convicted, he's caught and shipped off to this school where they teach you how to do this right the next time. And so there's a bunch of other students there studying for various purposes to take care of someone in their life, uh, different horrible bosses. And it is so entertaining, like a funny Hogwarts where the classes are in like poisons or staging an accident or disguises. Absolutely brilliant. So wildly entertaining. So fun. So great if you want a little bit of levity and some humor and creativity. And this reminds me a little bit of the movie 9 to 5 with Dolly Parton and I think Jane Fonda as well. But this has similar kind of tongue-in-cheek jokes like 
making the world a better place by getting rid of your boss. And great. I recommend this. The next revenge recommendation is The Last Mrs. Parrish, which is a domestic thriller with an over-the-top villain. I would recommend this book for fans of domestic thrillers or people that are newer to reading the subgenre of domestic thrillers. I have seen critiques from other booktubers that they did not enjoy this book that much. I think mostly due to the writing style. Um, the dialogue they found was kind of cheesy and the descriptions were overly written and like literal and obvious. Um, so I saw that critiques on the writing style and I've also heard the plot is very predictable. That's why I say like if you're newer to domestic thrillers or if you don't mind the predictability, it could be fun. For me, this is the book that got me into reading again as an adult. So this will always be close to my heart and I hadn't read anything like this. This focuses around a con woman who is trying to infiltrate this social circle. She has her eyes set on this woman who appears to have it all. She has the hot husband, extravagant rich lifestyle. So our con woman wants to steal her husband, Mr. Parrish, and take over her life, essentially. And that's the general census of the book. You're and it's a domestic thriller because we're dealing with like family and relationships, married couples. It's psychological. Um, Revenge plays a huge element in this and I can't talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil anything. But when I talk about what I look for in a thriller that I want to feel how the person is wronged. I want to feel in my bones that they deserve revenge and I'm rooting for them uh, to my core. Like I feel that here. Like I am rooting for our characters here um, because that that situation has been laid. It's very intelligent, very strategic, very well thought out. Uh, conscious doesn't really play an element and I am okay with that because this was very satisfying. Very, very satisfying to me. I recommend The Last Mrs. Parish, but again, only to those specific types of readers and what they're looking for. Next up is Confessions. This is a Japanese psychological thriller. We start off with a teacher in, I think she's in a middle school teacher and she is giving her class a speech. She says, and this is like the opening chapter, this is the last speech that she's going to give them because she's quitting, she's not gonna be their teacher anymore. But her daughter died on the school property, tragically, a while ago, everybody knows. But she knows that two of the students in that class are responsible for her daughter's death. And she is going to exact her revenge on them. This is a trip. So from there, it goes to like a bunch of different point of views. The um, the ones she's accusing, we have their point of views. I think we have their family members, other classmates. So we get different perspectives, but truly psychological, truly devious how this was laid out. And it is pretty outrageous um, in terms of uh, science, but if you go add it from the perspective of these middle schoolers that might not have the scientific knowledge, that just might have the fear of this, then this is so brilliant and a great revenge tale. Now we're getting into the territory with some gruesome violence. The next revenge recommendation I have for you is the Mind F series. This is a contemporary thriller. This here is a special edition bind up of all five novellas. They are available on Kindle Unlimited if you subscribe to that service. You can read them for free. They're pretty short, but there are five included in this edition. This is a contemporary thriller, like I said, but it would be great for readers who are looking for a subplot of romance. Because technically, I think this is categorized as a romance, but I think if you're looking for that, you're going to be disappointed. In this book, we follow Lana Myers. She is a serial killer and she is going after the people that wronged her, primarily men. So I am rooting for her because I support women's rights and I support women's wrongs. She's very violent, very gruesome. This is kind of a vulgar book. The romance comes in because she meets the FBI agent in charge of her case and they start dating. And so that's the romance element. But really this book focuses on the thrilling plot of the revenge. Now, in terms of the criteria I said I'd look for in a revenge story, my heart was ripped out for the reasons she was seeking revenge. And 
it's one of those that's like, it's kind of flashbacks, so you get it over time. So you may start it and it doesn't seem that bad, but you get like pieces of her story at a time. And it was so emotionally disturbing to me that like it, it really, really upset me. Um, so I was really rooting for her, but I was like rooting for her before we got to that. It was just, the revenge was was really, really tough and, and kind of broke my heart. So that was a little bit emotional for me. Uh, it is very, very gruesome and vulgar, I've mentioned. Uh, prepare for that, which I, I was rooting for. I kind of liked it. Um, I think there's one scene where she cuts off some guy's uh, member and like shoves it down his throat. So like, that's the kind of uh, gruesome stuff I'm talking about. But yeah, there's there's a lot of that kind of stuff. So prepare. But the revenge is very satisfying. The conscious element, I don't think it really exists and nor should it. This is just an action packed thriller of revenge and very satisfying. It does have some intelligence to it with the gruesome aspects. There is a lot of strategy. There's a lot of preparation. There is a lot of making her char her her characters, her like villains, her targets suffer. But the suffering is mostly uh, physical. It's physical revenge. So fantastic, fantastic series of stories. I recommend this for readers looking for that kind of gruesome story with a subplot of romance. The next revenge recommendation I have is Best Serve Cold, a grim dark fantasy by Joe Abercrombie. Although I take it back, it's not quite fantasy because the magic is only like three to five percent in this book. It is a straight up revenge tale, but very, very grim dark. What I love about this is again, we have a female main character and in the beginning, I'm not sure if it's the prologue or chapter one, but we kick off with the story of how she was wronged, the event of betrayal that changed her life. And you feel for her and you understand her need for revenge. So kicking it off with the criteria, I feel for this character, uh, my heart was, I'm not ripped out, but I, I was definitely feeling for her and see the need. There was a lot of intelligence with this, a lot of planning. She gets a band of people together. Uh, we have a poisoner. He's a very seasoned professional and he has this assistant and their banter is like really fun, but that poisoner was hilarious. Um, she has this muscle, this guy who is obsessed with counting and numbers like he counts everything and and that's all he thinks about his name is friendly he's not so friendly if you're on the wrong side of his fist but really funny how everything is quantified for him and that's his focus and then you have this like bar barbarian who used to do bad things but now he just wants to be a good guy but he's roped into her revenge alongside her and so you have this group and for as violent and as grim and as dark this is it's flipping hilarious. It, the characters are so vivid, so individual with their identities and the banter, the situations, the dialogue, hilarious. It's so funny that I could be laughing throughout this revenge story. And then we do have a little bit of an element of con a conscious because our, our girl at some point starts to wonder like, should I do this? Like at some point she kind of hesitates on executing her revenge. And then other people say to her, like, to what extent are you going to go through with this? It's not going to undo the situation. It's not going to make things right. It's not going to change things. So what's the point? What is the point of revenge? But it's not a philosophical book. Okay, we're not diving too far into that. This isn't about morals. Um, <laughs> it's grim dark very grim, very dark. And this is part of a universe, the first law universe. So there's three books that come before this, a trilogy, even though this is classified as a standalone, you could read it on its own. But just note that there's this one character, Shivers, he's the barbarian who wants to turn over a new leaf and do good. He was like a supplemental character in the first law trilogy didn't play a major part. But in this one, he talks about a lot of the characters from that book. And so this could spoil you for the trilogy in terms of who's alive, who's dead, and who is in power. Um, not I mean, if you find that spoilery, a warning, you know, that's in this book. Otherwise, you'll just hear Shivers talking about characters 
that are from that trilogy and you don't meet here. He'll be like, oh, I hear so-and-so's voice in my head telling me X, Y, Z, or, you know, he'll like refer to something that happened. But if you're kind of prepared for it and know you didn't miss anything, it's just part of that other trilogy that you didn't read, like you'd be fine. This is a very contained story in this one book. Very satisfying revenge. It hits like all those criteria that I'm looking for. And I also just really, I really appreciate a female main character being the violent one. And I mean, actually in this stack, most of these main characters seeking revenge are women. So I don't know if I'm like an angry girl myself, but um, I just, I loved it because that's not typically like a female persona. Like women are supposed to be, you know, feminine and the nurturers and forgiving. And it's like, nope, I'm a savage warrior and I have no problem violently unaliving people, coming up with strategy to do so. So this was great. This was a really satisfying revenge story. Now, how could I possibly talk about revenge books without talking about Carrie, which of course is a horror novel by Stephen King. This one is truly horror. It has some supernatural elements to it. It is about a young girl named Carrie who has a tough life. She's bullied at school. And so you really get that like tortured element that makes you understand why she's so angry. And then at home, her home life is very restrictive and judgmental. Um, unloving if you ask me. I mean, I know everyone shows love in different ways, but it's just a very difficult home life. And so Carrie gets some supernatural powers and she uses them to exact revenge on people. And you know, I am cheering for her. There's no element of a conscious. It is just vicious getting revenge. Innocents get caught up in it. It is just massive, but I'm kind of rooting for her. I'm kind of into it, which feels weird when like mass amounts of people are getting killed, but um, I am on Carrie's side because this poor, poor girl did not deserve what she was getting. So this is a very satisfying revenge story. It's pretty short. I mean, Stephen King's books are like bricks. So when you find a short one that does its job well, that's pretty awesome. Carrie is a classic. After you read Carrie, I recommend the YA horror The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is a Carrie retelling, so it's a similar plotline with revenge and you're still cheering for her. This has an added layer of like a more modern time period and also social commentary on racism because we have like high school students with a lot of racism. There's like a segregated uh, prom black prom and the regular prom. And so I really liked the added depth of that. So you get all these satisfying revenge as in Carrie with this poor girl who is getting tormented at school by bullies. Uh, she's tormented by because of her hair because she's part black. And so she's tormented at school. She has a very difficult home life. There's a supernatural element and it it results in revenge and some innocents might get caught up in it as well. No sense of conscious. It's just violent. You know, I don't know if there's too much strategy to it, too much like intelligence, but that's okay. It's just satisfying. It's hard because of that race discussion because that is like a real life horror with no revenge. There, there's no revenge for that. It's just a crappy situation. And so it, it gives a little bit of like substance to it. So this is a great read. The final revenge recommendation I have for you is Gone Girl. This is a domestic thriller that I think would be great for fans of crime stories and novels. This one is going to be difficult to explain because I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, but we have this guy and his wife goes missing one day and everyone looks at him because, you know, the husband always did it, right? Um, and so he's trying to prove his innocence. He's trying to find out what happened to his wife and it gets very twisty, turny from there. There is like a speech in here uh, that is just groundbreaking. It's called the cool girl speech, I think, or refers to the cool girl. I'm calling it the cool girl speech, which is uh, mwah, the, like the point of this book. It's so awesome. Uh, but this is fantastic and satisfying, but satisfying in a way that like when you finish the book, it's like everybody sucks here. Everybody sucks here. Everybody's an a-hole. Um, so the revenge is like, 
satisfying but ambiguous, if that makes sense. And I know this isn't the most accurate book review, but I want you to go into this kind of blind. If you haven't read the book, if you haven't seen the movie, which is fantastic, by the way, I don't want to ruin it for you. Just know that if you're looking for a revenge story and you like crime stories and books, give this one a shot. Fantastic. Those are my 10 revenge book recommendations for just about every reader, just about every mood. I hope that you have commented down below with your recommendation for other revenge books or talking about some of the elements that you think make a very satisfying revenge story. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.